everyone, Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. I am Zul Ilham and today we're going to talk about literature review. So let's get started. As I've discussed before in the designing your research proposal, literature review is actually a document in order for you to review previous literatures that have been published and also review current literatures that are available now to find research gap so that when you review both literatures then you can actually see where should you proceed in your proposed research because throughout uh, the findings that you have go through you can actually see there are issues that are not being addressed or there are new avenues to venture to venture to and it is a really critical step before you proceed further in your research so why should you do a literature review uh, normally the first answer is for you to have deeper understanding towards your research because when you review a lot of literatures then you know more you understand more about your research and it is one of critical component of your research proposal and also your thesis later on and nowadays there are also a trend where supervisors research supervisors will ask you to write the literature review as a full journal article and to be published as one of the requirements for your graduation and it is also a preliminary study so that before you go into pursuance of PC, so it could be justified. It is also an academic writing practice. It encourages familiarity in the research area so that you can know more about your research work. So I will just go straight into the steps of doing it. I will also include a little bit of shortcuts in order for you to help you uh, to write your literature review. So first one, you must formulate a good research title so that you can have a research focus and you can underline the keywords. So in order to formulate a good research title, you have to discuss with your proposed supervisor or you have to come up uh, with a title uh, that is not too long, not too short, concise meaning brief but then comprehensive i know it's kind of mouthful but then along the way i think you'll get it so as an example of a research title here uh, we have the production of biodiesel from from waste frying oil using lipase catalyzed transesterification and this is uh, with regards to my research and if you can see i underline a few words inside the title so those are the ones that i identify as keywords biodiesel lipase and also catalyst so you break it into smaller topics you may use topic three you know you the thing that when you draw a tree so that it grows up from the branch towards the uh, leaf and that kind of stuff or you can just do like what i did here is that I just bring out the keywords into biodiesel, lipase, and catalyst. So after you bring out the keyword, so you have to generate questions from the keyword. For biodiesel, for example, what are the resources to produce biodiesel? What are the biodiesel feedstock? Lipase, what are the advantages and disadvantages of using lipase? Catalyst, what kind of catalyst currently being used to produce biodiesel? What do people use before? What do people currently use? What are the new catalysts being introduced? Uh, so you have to ask questions in order for you to help find the journal articles to be reviewed later on. So you have to use the keywords or questions that you have generated in a search engine in order to find research article. And I've shown you here, uh, mostly people will use Google Scholar because you could it, it is easy to use anywhere without subscriptions. So for Microsoft Academic, it is also free to use anywhere. Science Direct needs university subscription, meaning that uh, you can use it when you are at home, but you couldn't really download it if you're, you don't have the ID. So normally when you are enrolled in a university, university 
uh, will allow you to subscribe in Science Direct and you can download the paper. For BASE is uh, Germany BASE, uh, for CORE is Open Access and Baidu Scholar is based in China and Semantic Scholar is kind of a new search engine and science.gov is, is the search engine to find all the research from US federal agencies research. So what I will show you right now is how to, this is Google Scholar and this is Microsoft Academy. So as you can see, uh, both of it could be accessed. So I will show you how to find uh, some tips to find general article. So the shortcut tip number one to search for general article is to type your keyword with a Boolean connector called N and you write dot PDF. So let's try to do it now. So as for me, I will try to type biodiesel and PDF as you can see biodiesel and dot PDF. So you will see a lot of paper uh, so you can actually remove patterns, remove citations so that you can have all general articles here. So you have all PDF being listed here. And I also would like to recommend you to use uh, use simple mass downloader to download PDF files in the bulk because if not, you have to download one by one. So this is available at Chrome Web Store for free. You can download it. So after you download it, you will have something like this. Simple mass downloader as an extension in your Chrome. So uh, I will show you how to do it. So let's say if you are interested, interested to download this article. So we just click right click and put add link to list, add link to list. Now you right click, add link to list and press add link to list. So you find another PDF one and add link to list, add link to list. So you press this button and you can see all of the papers are already listed here. And you can write your, your extension here, it should be PDF. So you can select all and you can download all of the papers immediately uh in bulk so you don't have to uh, waste your time to download one by one so i really encourage you to use this simple mass downloader is a recommended uh, extension for your chrome and it's free so i wrote it here shortcut tips number one type your keyword with a boolean connector and dot pdf and then you use simple mass downloader to help you to download articles in the bulk. Uh, further, you have to assess the research articles that you have collected. You have to check the ab abstract first. Just read the abstract so you can see whether it's relevant or not. Refer the methodologies used if the abstract is okay. So you refer the methodologies, use material subject, check whether it is reliable or not and you check the sample size, is it adequate, results tempered, spurious correlation. I will explain about results tempered and spurious correlation later on. And authors well cited. So good papers are normally well cited. And normally, I said normally because in certain cases, uh, there are also good papers that are out of reach. Uh, and another one is it should be ethically written. You don't want to be uh, citing papers that are not ethically written. So shortcut trips number three is that you quick filter the paper without reading it properly in the first stage because you have so many papers that you have. So you can create a folder. Uh, in my case, I normally use I normally use ABC for I will just make a folder for the journal. So A is highly relevant, must read. So B unsure might be relevant. So C not relevant. So you can list, uh, you can immediately, for example, you can just create, a, you can create here like a highly relevant. And, uh, so you can create another one, B. Um, it more.
need to read. So normally I will just uh, do unsure might be relevant and see not relevant. So it's up to you. But this is deal. This will be helpful, and I think it's a good thing to do. So I've told you about the result. It's about results temper, right? Uh, so I'm going to show you an example. So Dr. Haruko Obokata, she was like a superstar scientist. This uh, happened when I studied in Japan. She made a groundbreaking finding on top being young and pretty. She is investigated for faking the data published in Nature. So you have to make sure that the paper that you, you cite is not the one that has some ethical problems. So in this case, as you can see in the website that I show you here, uh, you can see that you see image manipulations and the piece of white rectangle uh, here, you know, and then you change the brightness and contrast, you know, this, this kind of thing, they temper the result to make it better and make it identical, see. There are a lot of cases nowadays, so you don't want to be involved in citing those papers and, you know, later on it will be retracted and it will create problems to you. So next, uh, I've told you about spurious correlational evidence. So normally, uh, I think everybody understand when X increases, variable Y also increases. So you immediately say, conclude that uh, it has cause and effect between two things. Uh, let's just see it to, so that you understand. As an example, Spears correlation here shown, showed that per capita consumption of mozzarella cheese correlates well with civil engineering doctorates awarded in the US. So if you just use correlation in order to conclude, uh, so if you consume a lot of mozzarella cheese, then you can have a lot of uh, folks having civil engineering PhD and the R squared is really high in this case. So you couldn't really say when the correlation is high, what I, I would like to emphasize that when the correlation is high, it doesn't mean that the thing is true. It needs further clarification, it needs further analysis. You can also see in the next graph, where total revenue generated by arcades correlates highly with computer science doctorates awarded in the US. So could you really say that if you have a lot of arcades, a lot of people using arcades, then a lot of your population will be good in computer science. So you couldn't really say that, right? So it's spurious correlation, so be careful about this. So yeah, you can check it out in the link below for many spurious correlations so you don't want to be involved in citing those papers and next step is you have to summarize in your own words analyze the journal's articles and summarize the key finding relevant to your study what can you know immediately what are the key finding what are the key figures and table what are the common methodologies used so when you already review a lot of articles you can actually see the similarity you can see the trend uh, and I also encourage you to do a literature review table of summary. So you list uh, the name of the authors, you can simplify the topic, concept, theory, methods, and sample finding notes so that so you can have it a lot, so you can compare it easily. So you have your own literature review table of summary. I really recommend you to do this. but. It depends, some people have other ways of doing it, but you need to record it somewhere so that you can uh, actually monitor whatever that you have, downloaded whatever that you have read. So you next, you have to create the backbone of your literature review, uh, the introduction, uh, what the, and then the next step, the 1.2, so as, I've shown you here is uh, the example that I've shown you just now. So the introduction should be current fossil fuel price, environmental issue, hence you have to use biofuel and biodiesel is crucial. So process, how to do it, use catalyst or not, what kind, what, the, what are the issues, challenges, 
and the conclusion possible but with challenges to overcome challenges so you create a backbone so that you have a guideline on how to read the literature, literature review but in order to help you this i have a shortcut tips use post it notes to write the possible subsections as backbone of your article and paste it on the wall write your ideas to rearrange it until you find the harmony if it feels incomplete add more post it try it so you, it is something like this so you can actually create subsection uh, and then you move you keep on moving the post it here and there if you don't think it falls under this section you can move it here you can add more and then you you know so that you will understand so shortcut tips number five is that you find two or three high quality journal article related to study just find two or three high quality one check the references good articles normally cite other good articles too so it saves your time, but check for the latest. So you, you find latest good article, so you can refer to their uh, references and from there you can go on. And number six, get to know the research giant. In every research field, no matter how specialized, there must be a leading expert and competing research group that are, that are actually specialized in that particular research area. Find them, check their publications. Normally, they will publish uh, a lot and some will have contradicting data interesting data one will top up another so it's going to be good for your discussion number nine you have to synthesize so after you already have all the pieces of information you have to integrate it to form a whole new one if five researchers in their different papers implicating that using oil that can be edible, it might trigger food versus fuel dilemma. There must be something wrong about it. So you already find a research gap, right? So build bridges between the related topic, make recommendations, connecting practice to research. So it should be like an inverted pyramid. It should start with general stuff, really huge and wider view to specific areas of your research. So Shortcut tip number seven is first you write about what has been studied in previous study. Then you write about the conventional practice, the now. What are people doing right now? So you criticize what has been done in the past and current practice. So uh, you discuss the issues, you find the challenges. So you already find the research gap where you want to go. Something that has not been done before or not being addressed. So later, you have to write according to proper academic writing style. You have to use justifying approach rather than declaration approach. You cannot just say, my project is good because it's just good. You have to justify it based on logic and proof, not by your emotion. So you have to use appropriate linkers and phrases. So linkers, if you want to add ideas, you can use also in addition as well as and contrasting. If you have uh, argument in contrast, even though although showing reason as shown, giving example, explaining results, you know, you have to use proper link linkers so that you will have a good flow in writing your article. So shortcut tips number eight, you have to be original or else you might be plagiarizing. So failing to properly quote somebody will make you cop, uh, being, you are actually plagiarizing somebody else. So citing other people's work without giving them credit, uh, it is also a form of plagiarism. So you have, if you quote, you have to have quotation marks. So nowadays, all the thesis article journals, they will use turn it in. So in turn it in, uh, it will produce similarity index. And if you can see here turning in, uh, it, will, it will check for similarity index. So journals where you submit your articles or even your thesis, uh, the university will submit it into turn it in. So it will generate uh, similarity index. So in if your similarity index is over 40%, it will be reject. So it will be rejected. It is not original if your similarity more than 40%. If it's less than 20%, then it's highly original. So 18, 17 that I showed just now. So you have to make sure you don't just copy and paste other people's work.
So shortcut tips number nine, you have to remember you are not writing a textbook. So don't try to write about everything. So when you read so many journal articles, you have be you will be full of information. You want to write about everything. Everything seems so interesting to you. So don't try to use all articles. Just use the A type. Refer back to what I've shown you earlier, right? The A type, highly relevant ones. So leave the chance of information for man, for writing a manual or textbook. You are writing a literature review. You have to choose only the most relevant one. So how long should you write this literature review? For master's thesis, generally it's 2,500 words to 3,000 words. For PhD thesis, 5,000 words. For a research proposal, it should just uh, be a short one, not too long. Five to seven pages of A4 with double spacing should be fine, relatively around 1,000 to 1,500 words. However, you have to refer to your supervisor and to the university because different universities have different requirements for this. And lastly, in order for you to write the concluding remarks, you have to summarize the important aspects that have been discussed throughout the article. You explain a little bit about the past, Evaluate the current state of research done. Identify significant issues or gaps in the existing study. Outline areas of future studies. List suggestions on the areas need to be studied. And briefly relate the suggestion with improvement of real practice or impacts in real application. So you have to connect everything, all the things that you have written in a very short concluding remarks. So you also have to organize the reference using citation management software. I've told you before that you need, there are many citation styles, classical Harvard, APA, MLA, Chicago. So you can use the help of EndNote, Mendeley, Zotero, RefWorks, or even Microsoft Word uh, as citation management software. You can actually read it here. I've put up the link. So you can read, uh, their citation manager comparison chart so you can see the cost for zotero is free for basic account mendeley is free for basic account and uh, if you have subscription throughout your university some universities have subscription so it will be free so if not you will have to pay for it so those are the citation manager comparison so you can also learn about what it can do what it got could not do so how to help it and citation manager will really help you in order to organize your articles that have been downloaded or else you might have to do it manually so later you also have to validate the literature review so you have to check it so you whether it cover important up-to-date text it should be written clearly, there should be no grammatical or spelling errors and sentences should flow smoothly and logically. You can't be saying about A and suddenly jump to M and then move back to B. You know, it has to be some good flow in it. So in a nutshell, I can say that we can summarize it that we need four steps in order to write literature review. First, you have to define your your focus, uh, extracting keywords from the title, and then you do some literature search uh, with the tips that I've shown you just now, summarize it, creating the backbone, synthesizing and writing, validating and revising your article. So with that, uh, thank you and best of luck. And the best way uh, for you to do this literature review is start writing. If you don't write it, so you don't really know what, what will go wrong. So we just start writing and follow the steps and you see it back, you will see it uh, back and then you can always improve it. So best of luck, uh, thank you and try to write your literature review now.